welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to show you how you can do compositing and motion graphics in the freely available HitFilm Express. Now, compositing is when a video shot is made up from multiple elements, so here I'm actually being shot in front of a green background and then that element is being actually composited in front of the final background. And motion graphics is what happens when I say something like, welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. And that thing comes up and when it disappears again when I push it down or something, that's a motion graphics effect you've just seen. So let's go and see how I can do the compositing effects and the motion graphics effects in HitFilm Express. So here we are in HitFilm Express, which you can download for free by going to the web and going to a hitfilm.com and then going to a HitFilm Express and you'll find it all sitting there waiting to be downloaded and very popular, being used by uh, over 2 million people and uh, rising as we can see now. Anyway, let's go back to the package itself. I've got loaded in here a very familiar edit. If I play this, you'll see exactly what I mean. Welcome to another video from Explaining Computers. Yes, this is the actual edit for this very video. I've got the same shot you've just looked at. I thought we'd work on that shot to make it work. Because as you can see, we've got the title, we've got the episode title there working perfectly fine, but we've then got footage which has got green screen behind it. Clearly that's not what we want. So I'm gonna get rid of that footage by just deleting it. And what we're gonna do is to create a new what's called composite shot. So we'll go over here to where our media are. I've got the media displayed with nice little thumbnails there. I normally work, to be honest, like that. I just find it easier to work with names, but anyway, you can work either way, depending on what you want to do. Anyway, we're gonna create this new composite shot, and we're gonna do that there. We'll call it um, EC Hit Film SFX Intro. And I think it needs to be about, as far as I remember, about 52 seconds long. You'll see I'm working in a HD, what, 720p. So far, all Explaining Computers films have been produced at 720p. If you're thinking we want 1080p, Chris, it'll be happening very soon. I'm working now as part of, on the very last batch of a, a 720p films, but for now, that's what we'll use there for. And we'll go OK. And it'll create us here this new uh, composite shot hit film SFX intro. And I'm going to flick over to control so we can use those in a second. Now, this is basically going to be lots of layers that build up our final shot. And the back layer here is going to be the, the backing, which again you'll be familiar with. I've just dragged that across. Let's just make sure it fills completely and uh, swizz over at either end. There you are. That's the standard explaining computer's backing. Not very exciting so far. And on top of that, we're going to add in me. And here is the uh, Chroma element, the green screen element, I shot for that. And we'll drop that up there. Again, pull it across. And there we are, I'm now in the shot. Of course, you can't see the backing because we've just got the green there. You can turn our layers on and off with these little eye things here. We could see that, we could take it off, etc. Now, the first thing I need to do is that this element was shot in a 1080p, so it's too big. So what I'm going to do is to go up here to controls. The controls here will show what you can see for each particular layer. So you'll see that changes as I change layers. You can change things down here, but it's easier to work up the top a lot of the time anyway. So I'm going to go to transform, and we're going to change the scaling here to bring it down to make it fit roughly. One of the reasons I like shooting at one resolution, which is higher than the one I output at, is you've got a lot of flexibility in post to move things around. I often stand in the wrong place and that kind of thing, so we'll put it about there. It should be about 70 maybe. I do like numbers. It's showing through on the edge. That doesn't matter. We're about to get rid of all the green. But let's not have a frame where I've got my eyes closed. That looks a bit, more, a bit more exciting, doesn't it? So to add in the green screen effect, we'll go to the layer we want to work on and we'll select from there a new effect and it's going to be keying and it's going to be hue and RGB key. And that'll kick in there. Doesn't look very good so far because obviously it's not got the right settings. But let's open up the settings for it. And you'll see it's keying against a red at the moment. That clearly isn't going to work. Let's pick up the eyedropper, press and hold, pull it across. We'll pull out the green from, I think, about there. We might not get it right first time. That might, looks reasonably good so far. That doesn't work quite right. We want to make sure we're going from RGB, not from hue. That's looking a bit better. And the tolerance can come down quite a bit. That's actually not looking too bad. You notice if I come down too little, bits start to come up up here. It's always about every green screen shot is different, but so far, that's not too bad. I think that we'll just look a bit closer. 
So I'll go down and take us to 100%. And so we can see there clearly an edge and another edge. It's a little bit blocky. So I'm going to do a slight bit on edge softness, not a little bit, just a tiny bit there. Um, that'll maybe improve things very, very slightly. Uh, you might not see that in the video, that subtlety. But I'm now going to add in another uh, effect. The best way to do good green screen effects is to use multiple different effects on top of each other, not to do everything in one, in one pass. So I'm now going to go to uh, new effect again, back to keying and matte enhancement, and we're going to do a matte cleaner. Very, very useful thing to have. And if we go down here, matte cleaner, open up its settings. Normally you want a little bit of choke, which is a bit like adding contrast to a matte. So that'll just tidy things up a little tiny bit, but we'll also smooth that a little tiny bit as well. Um, doesn't take a lot, it's all subtle adjustments. That's actually not too bad, actually. I think that's a pretty good effect. So you might have to do additional things on that. There is a very useful effect for taking out any green or other color that's spilled onto the shot, and that is spill removal. We'll add that one in. I don't think there really is much um, spill to remove here, but uh, we just try and it doesn't make a lot of difference. Again, it's maybe very subtle as we put that in. On some shots, if you've got green sp sp spreading around the edges of your mat, you might need that heavily, but I don't think we need that very much here. But I thought I'd show you just so you've seen it. So if we take that back to, um, to a full uh, scale to fit, we've now got me in front of the background uh, talking about computers. To another video from explainingcomputers.com. Right. Having done the green screen compositing in this shot, we're going to move on to do a caption with a motion graphic. And to do that, we're going to bring in some more elements. We're going to import three files here. These are, like many of the elements used on the channel, were created in 3D, most of them anyway, in a light wave and then put together in Photoshop. And if I just uh, bung these into the shot, generally just so you can have a look, you've got three elements there, and actually one should be lowered down to make it work. You can see we've got an element there, which is the uh, caption itself, and on the end we've got these two individual letters, which are going to move and reveal the caption. Now, because I want to move these elements around, want to animate them both relative to each other and then as a block, I'm actually not going to do this directly in this shot in this composite. What I'm going to do is to create a new composite shot. There we are. We'll call it a CJB caption. That's what I always tend to call it. And uh, we'll go in and put in about, say, 10 seconds will be fine for that, and then we'll drop the, uh, the banner into here, and we'll drop the letters, get them both there, on top of that. And uh, oops, they should have been up there. So uh, we're now going to animate the letter E, and I think I'm going to go in a little bit because this wants to be quite detailed work we're going to be working on, that'll be okay. And I'm going to move across, I know the first bit of animation needs to start here at frame seven. And we're going to go into Transform and uh, Position, turn on animation there, go across to frame 19, add another keyframe, I'll press Alt and T, adds me that keyframe there, and I can use these controls to move back and forth between my keyframes. So I'll go back to the first one, and there I need to animate this thing so it's going to start out in the, roughly the middle of the screen, and then I actually want to be at uh, 382. So I won't mess around here, I'll just put the number in, and as you can see, that will open out, and the E is now animated. And now adding the animation for the second letter, I'll just quickly go through that. And uh, there we are, we now have some animating letters. Isn't that exciting? Now, you might have noticed, because you will be observant people, I'm sure, that this isn't actually revealing what's below, they're simply sliding around on top of it. So we want to hide bits of that as the animation opens up. So if we go down to that layer here, go down to that, what we're going to do is to add a mask. So I'll go into the mask control here, and we'll uh, drag that out on the screen. There we are, there's our mask. And uh, that hasn't helped us so far, but we're going to do a scale on that. So for the uh, element, it's down here, isn't it? Let's open up again, transform, so we can see the uh, scale on the, the mask. Open that there, transform the mask, must transform the right bit. And we know on that, we want to have a scale which is there. We want it to be in that position at the end. But then if we come back to the first frame over here, you'll hopefully see what I'm doing 
In a second, all will become clear. That needs clearer than it is now. I'm going to remove the lock between the two elements of scaling, and then I'm going to scale in just that bit there. And so finally now we should have something which we run the whole thing, you'll see it goes yay, it opens up and we've got that nice little animated caption. So all we need to do now is to go back to our first composite, hope you're still with me here. We need to work out where this needs to go, so let's just play it through a bit. Welcome to another video from Explaining Computers. It's about there it wants to go in, and again I'll give ourselves a little bit of um, detail, we can see what's going on. And I will take the caption, there it is, look, and we'll drop it into here. And we know it starts about somewhere across there. Come on, scale, 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 scale. There we are. And uh, it would just do that. But what we need to do is to go to its uh, seventh frame in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where it's going to start. And I can now animate that by going to transform and position, and we will uh, lock that there with a key, Alt T, and then we'll go back to here, which is the start of it, and we will pull it down, and then finally you should find we've got it coming up and across. And if we play this back, let's give ourselves a bit more space, this will hopefully work okay. Let us see. Welcome to another video from Explaining Computers. Dot com. Yes, that's going to work. So all we need to do now is to go back into the editor. We might remember we had the shot and we need to put in our intro, which is here. So we'll just drop that into the, the shot. Where does it start? About there. I won't get this exactly right, but I won't mess around. But it'll give you the basis of what's going. That should roughly work. We just try that. Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. And it doesn't look perfect there, so what we'll do, we'll just render this out so you can see it properly. So I'll go down to a render our in-out area, or export our in-out area, go to export. I'll just change the preset to my one for a 720p there, and we'll export that out. And there we are, it's finished. I'll just open it up. Didn't even give it a proper name, never mind, it should work. Yes, we're now making a film inside a film, which is rather strange, isn't it? But in a second, let's see if it works. Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time... As we've seen in this video, HitFilm Express is a great package for doing compositing and motion graphics work, and best of all, you can download it for free. However, it's not the only free tool available for doing this kind of work. There's also a package called Fusion from Blackmagic Design, which is not quite the same, it's not layer-based, it's node-based, which is a bit more daunting to get into, but you can do amazing things with Fusion, and I'm going to have a look at Fusion in a future video. But now that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.